Good evening, everyone. Hello, Dr. Lez. How are you, Dr. Lez? Shalom, Rav. How are you? Baruch Hashem. How are you? You give us the news. Sure, so Rav, there's always something going on. Incredible. Every single day, every moment of the day, there's something going on. It doesn't stop there. It doesn't it, it stop. It really doesn't stop. So I'll tell you some. It's a mixture uh, of good and uh, with the reality. But something really quite amazing is last week they opened the light rail in Tel Aviv. And it cost in the billions. It actually connects Bat Yam all the way to uh, to the you know in Tel Aviv and Pedak. I think it goes to Kfasaba. It's amazing, and it, some of the stations are really underground, like the one in Yerushalayim. And what is amazing is that the mayor of Yerush, uh, mayor of Tel Aviv uh, decided he's not going to um, he's not going to attend the opening. And there were people that actually protested. And what were they protesting? That it's not open on Shabbos. But what was incredible, the previous government, the Labour was in charge of transport, uh, Merab Bechaeli, and she said that it will be open on Shabbos. She was defiant. And look, Miri Regev, my daughter actually worked with Miri Regev, but Miri Regev is the transport minister, and they stood their ground. And Baruch Hashem, it's not open on Shabbos. It's not only that it's not open on Shabbos. If it's open on Shabbos, it means that you've got everybody working. It changes the uh -huh. whole character of Tel Aviv, the whole character of Israel. So Baruch the character Hashem, of Shabbat. Uh, without Shabbos, they say more has have uh, have about the Jews keeping Shabbos. Said the Shabbos kept the Jews because of Shabbos. Uh -huh. We remain Jewish. So Baruch Hashem. Now, Rav, today I don't know if you heard. It's so sad. There was in Makabim the junction. Yeah. There was a ramming, and the person who uh, the Palestinian who he actually had a work permit. And he entered sure. uh, at that crossing, at the crossing very close to Moda Inn where my daughter lives. And um, and he, he, like, they don't know if he was given or how he got hold of a truck with Israeli number plates. And he tried to ram down Israeli soldiers. Unfortunately, one was killed. And then they neutralized him. And this is a father of, I think, five children. Unbelievable. So when they say they've got no work, they're desperate, it's not true. He had work. He had work. He had a work permit. And the day before, this is a mamish, a nice, a miracle. On the light rail in Yerushalayim, in, in Shimon Hatzadik Station, that's near the old city, there was a 14-year-old boy. Can you believe this? With a knife. And he tried to yeah. kill Yid. He tried to kill Yid. A 14-year-old. Which which parents brings up their children of 14 to try and kill, to kill other people? It, it's just unbelievable. Anyway, but, but yeah, Baruch Hashem, he, he was also neutralized. He was, and, and Rav, I want to end on an amazing story, which unfortunately the press do not, they don't um, publicize. But in Ramat HaSharon, there was a supermarket, and it was just before Shabbat. And people were buying the, the Shabbos, um, you know, for, for Shabbos, preparing for Shabbos. And they found that the whole system went down. So they didn't know what to do because the cashiers couldn't, so the manager, he thought very quickly, and it was like literally before they were closing. He said, listen, it's before Shabbat, everybody, you know what you bought. Uh, take your goods home with you. Have a wonderful Shabbat. Next week, when you can, come and pay. You can repay us. And they think that every single customer did that. They couldn't believe it. But this is, I did post this on Facebook. Somebody mentioned the story and I, and I posted it on Facebook. But you don't see this in the main media. You don't see this in the newspapers. But ain't Kamo Am Israel. There's no, no one like Am Israel. Ain't Kamo Am Israel. Ram, uh, Shabbat Shalom. And, uh, and we always have to look at the good. We always have to look we, at we the good. We have to look at the positive, Bezrat Hashem. Okay. So good. Thank you very much, Doctor Les. for the good news. Uh, Marky, I think that uh, you're going to be the Baal Kore tonight because I don't have the Jeffrey with us. So I'm going like to give you. I don't know. I don't know. Dafka this morning I saw him, and he said he's going to join the show, and for some reason, uh, I'll go maybe get he's wrong. Yeah. Yeah, so you're going to get the uh, Baal Kore. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, 
we gonna read this coming okay. Shabbos, Parashat Kitavo. Parashat Kitavo, believe it or not, we almost in the end of Sefer Dvarim, Rabotai. Next week we have a double parshiot, Nitzavim Vayelech. And that's it. No, no, next week is Nitzavim Vayelech. And then Azinu. Yeah, yeah, Azinu Beracha. Yeah, but we're almost in the end of Sefer Dvarim. Can you believe it? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay, so I would like, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna mute everyone, and then we're gonna start the show when Mark is ready. Let me just see. I'm ready. Mark, ready. Ready, ready. Okay, good. Okay, Parashat Kitavo. Vehaya Kitavo Hilaaret. Asher Adonai Elohecha noten lecha nachala. It will be when you enter the land. It will be when you enter the land that Hashem your God gives you as an inheritance and you possess it and dwell in it. Okay. I would like to dedicate the Shaul in memory of Esther Kaven, but Ketia Mordechai Ben Rahma, Arab of Ram Haim Ben Eliezer Yaakov, Tamar Badzeav Yaakov Salomon Ben Parha, Dvor Ruth Bad Baila, Malka Regina Badjoya, Keti Gurjea Bad Parha, and Health of Menashe Naji Ben Farha, Liora Bat Miriam, Arab Moshe Ben Bayabatia, Arab Moshe Ben Devora, Arab Shlomo Yuda Ben Dali, Arab Ram Ben Marima, Arab Shlomo Yuda Ben Dali, Devora Bat Esther, Orna Bluma Bat Miriam, Shaina Keila Bat Hana, Mordechai David Ben Lea Haim, Nahum Ben Pesareza, Uvakaden Bat Tali Esther, Baruch Ben. ציון בן לאה, צבי בן חווה, שמואל בן, שמואל מאיר בן שושה בלימה, לירון בן שרית ועובדיה, משה, משה אברהם בן חן אריבה, חיה ציפורה בת רחל, איילה עדן בת רבקה, טוב אליבה בת רחל, נחום זאב בן שינה רבקה, יהושע חיים בן חיה לאה, ברוך בן שרה חיינה, חנה משה Rivka Bat Zelda, please God, Refua Shlema, to all of them. Sorry, one okay. more, Rev. Chaya uh, Miriam Bat Rachel. Chaya Miriam Bat Rachel, please God, Refua Shlema, to all of them, and to all the people of the world, and to all the people of the world. Okay, Parashat Kitavo. The parashat starts with the word, Vehaya. And we explained many times in the past, The word Vehaya, Hazal, in, uh, in Midrash Rabbah, on Sefer Bereshit, on chapter 42, has, if I'm not mistaken, verse 3, Hazal tell us, En Vehaya ela leshon simcha. The word Vehaya referring to joys and happiness. We have to understand what is the joys and happiness that the Torah is speaking. Nachon, that the Torah speak When is the real joy going to be? When you come to the land of Eretz Israel, that the Almighty given you as a inheritance, inheritance. But we have to understand what is it mean. So I saw a beautiful commentary that brought by Rabbi Haim Ben Atar. Rabbi Haim Ben Atar, born in the city of Sali in Morocco 327 years ago. And in his commentary on the Torah, He explained like this. He said, Vehaya, nahon that it's simha. But we have to understand when gonna be that simha. Bnei Israel, while they was in a the wilderness, they've been provided with everything. They have the cloud of glory that was surrounding them. That means that they have air condition, cold and hot during the summer, during the winter. The cloud of glory was like a washing machine, was like a shower for them. They was not short with nothing. If you worrying about food, they have the manna. If you worrying about drinking, they have the well of Miriam. The well of Miriam, that was a special water that the person drink from that water, as I'll explain. Number one, if he had any disease, any physical disease or any spiritual disease, get cured. 
Not only that, the well of Miriam, those special water that call Be'era Shel Miriam, can help a person to have more wisdom, help them to understand the Torah. What else they need? They was in happiness. How can they be in more happiness? Say, the Or Haim HaKadosh, Rabbi Haim Ben Atar, like this. He's saying, when we go on a journey, a person, when he, what is his final destination? What does he really want? While he's journeying, while he's traveling, while he's flying, that's all beautiful. It's beautiful. You journey, you enjoy it. But it's, when you become happy, when is the final thing that makes you really happy when you arrive in your destination? So that's mean that while Bnei Israel was in a wilderness and they've been provided with everything, they were short with nothing. They couldn't be happy. Why? When are they going to be really happy, say Rabbi Haim Ben Atal? When they reach to the final destination. That's what Rabbi Haim Ben Atal said that the Torah tried to teach you. Now, that sometime you're on a journey. People excited, they're going on holiday. People excited, going to visit family overseas, whatever the case is. Say, but when do you really happy when you reach to the final destination? Sarah, behind Ben Atar, here the Torah tell you, you know when you're going to be happy, when is the final destination? That we're going to receive the land of Eretz Israel. That when we're going to dwell in the land of Eretz Israel without sorrows. And like the, Dr. Lez mentioned earlier to us, what's happening in Israel, every day something else. We don't have a peace and how many day at the moment. It's come to teach us something very important. It's come to teach us that when are we going to be happy? When we're going to dwell in the land of Eretz Israel? When HaKadosh Baruch Hu going to redeem us? And Be'ezrat Hashem will speak what is the merit that hinting in the Torah to be redeemed. So it's come to tell you, you know what's going to be make you very happy? When you arrive in the land of Eretz Israel, when you dwell in the Eretz Israel, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu going to redeem you from everyone. And then you have no worries. You have no chores. There is no one that tried to destroy you as a nation. That's when it's going to be Vehaya. When you're going to land in Eretz Israel and you live in the land of Eretz Israel, in the Jewish state, and you call it the Jewish state, and you declare it as a Jewish state, that means underneath the law of the Almighty, not underneath the law that other people decide to make it as a land. The land of Eretz Israel, we have to understand, it's the land of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Ha'am Yehudi, the Jewish nation. What does it mean, the Jewish nation, Yehudi? Al Shem Yehuda, on the name of Yehuda, that was one of the 12 tribes. That means we've been called after the name of Yehuda. And if you take the word Yehuda, inside the word Yehuda, there is Shem Havaya, Yudke Vavke. That means we have to live as a Jewish people, with a Jewish identity. Not just to say, we Zionists, and it's enough. We go to the army. We have to keep the Torah. We have to keep the mitzvot. Whatever written in the Torah, that's how we have to live. And by Zerat Hashem, that when HaKadosh Baruch Hu going to redeem us, speedily in our days, we're going to be, that's the simcha that we're waiting for. And then it's saying, a pasuk, noten lecha nahala v'yirashta. Here become a big question that many of the Nepalshim ask. And the question is, Noten lecha, giving you, it's a prison. We know that when a person gets something, it's a prison. Nahala, it's inheritance. So how does it fit together? Present and inheritance. That's the question that's been asked by Rabbi Meir Baikim. Rabbi Meir Baikim, or Baikim, I'm not sure how to, uh, to pronounce his surname, he born in a city of Saloniki. He born around 323 years ago, if I'm not mistaken, in Greece. And he asked that question. He said, 
the word, when someone said to you, Noten lecha, I give you something. Okay, it's a prison, I give you something. But if you take the word Nahala, it's inheritance. So decide, is it the present or is inheritance? What is the Torah trying to tell us here? Therambi Meir Bacon like this. He said that Eretz Israel, it's a present. We know that Akadosh Baruch Hu promised Abraham Avinu that he will give the land of Eretz Israel to the Jewish people. But it's a present that forever, what it means forever, that no one can take it from us. For example, we know that in the time that Bet Amikdash was exist, in Shnata Yovel, in a Yovel year, the land that belonged to someone, let's say to Haim Shmel, and he sold that land in Shnata Yovel after 50 years, that land returned to the original owner. It said when it's come to the land of Eretz Israel, Nakadosh Baruch Hu, not only that he given it to us, okay, we also inherited us. What does it mean? And now I'm adding up my idea. It's come to teach us that sometimes, the children of Israel didn't behave well. They needed to go to exile. Other nation was here. Other rulers ruled the land of Eret Israel. But it was temporary. The same like Shnata Yovel. That when Akadosh Baruch Hu see that the Jewish people deserve to receive the land of Eret Israel, he will give it to them. Because the land of Eretz Israel, it's a gift, an inheritance that HaKadosh Baruch Hu promised the Jewish people. That means the land of Eretz Israel can never be taken from the Jewish people. And for example, about I just came to me now. While other people lived in the land of Eretz Israel, nothing was flourishing in the land of Eretz Israel. At the moment, that the Jewish people took occupation of that land again. Look at the land of Eretz Israel flourishing. It's come to teach us something very important, Rabota. It's come to teach us that the land of Eretz Israel, it's not only a present. Not only it's a present, but it's not only a present. It's inheritance that no one can take it from us. A present someone can take from you. Come, Rabbi Meir Baiken, and say something very important. What the Torah tell you here, not only that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to give it to you as a gift, he's going to give it to you as inheritance. Inheritance, no one can take it from you. And that's what he tell you, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu given us the land of Eretz Israel, number one, as a gift. But number two, it's inheritance that no other nation can take it from us. And if we see that there is other nation, it's just temporarily. But there is no flourish. The ground doesn't give what she gives. The land of Eretz Israel doesn't flourish. And we saw it. And that's the message here. Noten lecha nachala. HaKadosh Baruch Hu giving you a present and inheritance. And that's the land of Eretz Israel. Let's go to verse 2. And in verse 2, we see something very interesting. Look what it says. That you shall take of the first of every fruit of the ground that you bring in from your land that Hashem your God gives you. And you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that Hashem your God will choose to make his name rest there. Okay. There is here, first of all, a few questions. The first question that we have to ask, look what it says. The fruit of the land. What's well, the fruit of the land? Maharam Haviv. Maharam Haviv is Rabbi Moshe ben Haviv. He born in a city of Saloniki, also in Greece. He born around 370 years ago, if I'm not mistaken. 
And Maghav Habib asked the question like this. He said, we know that most of the fruit that the land of Eret Israel been blessed was a fruit that grew on a tree. How come that the Torah tell us Priyadama? For example, we know there are Shivata Minim. Five of those seven species, they are fruit that grow on a tree. For example, the dates, the pomegranate, the fig, the geffen. Geffen is the, what do you call it? The, um, the grapes. Okay, then the kamazite. The zite is the olive. Nahon, saura, vechita, that was from the ground. Come, Rav Ben Haviv, and say, but the majority of the fruit, I don't understand. It's grown on a tree. Why you send me pri adama from the fruit of the land? How come that the Torah say from the fruit of the land? The Torah should say, mi pri haetz. Why mi pri adama? That's the question of Maram Ben Haviv, Rabbi Moshe Ben Haviv. So, first of all, to understand that, we need to go to the Mishnah in Masechet Bikurim. The Mishnah in Masechet Bikurim in uh, uh, chapter one, Perek Aleph, Mishnah Gimel, uh, Mishnah, uh, Mishnah number three. Hazal said of this, Yored Adam Betoch Sadeu. The person go to his orchard, okay? Veroe Te'ena Shebikra. He saw a fig that the first pig, fig, fig, sorry, I said pig by mistake. The first fig that grow on a tree, he marked it. Okay? Then uh, he go to his vineyard and he saw uh, a grape, a bunch of grape. He have to mark it. And the same with the pomegranate. Come the Mishnah and say, you know why does he have to mark those first fruit that born, that grown, to say, to thank Sakadosh Baruch Hu, to say thank you. Why? Because that's the Bikurim. The, to show gratitude to the Almighty that help him to grow up figs or help him to grow up grapes, okay, pomegranates and etc. Okay? The reason that we mark those fruit is that was the first fruit when it's grow up and it's ready to be eaten, we're taking it where? To Yerushalayim, wherever the, the Beta Migdash in, in Yerushalayim. <laughs> if a person live a, wherever he live in Eretz Israel, he have to walk. What is the Hidush here? Say, the Ma'arab ben Habib, you know why the Torah tell us me pri ha'adama from the fruit of the ground? I'll tell you why. He say when a person took that fruit and he marked it, how does he mark it? He take a gemi. Hazal say gemi. What is gemi? Gemi can be a string, can be elastic, whatever is it. Okay? He marked the fruit. To know which one was the first fruit to grow up that he can take as a bikurim to bet amigdash. Say Maharam Behaviv, something important. I'll tell you why the Torah tells us. Dafka. Priyadama, the fruit of the ground. I'll explain to you. He said like this. He said, in the Shulchan Aruch, in Shulchan Aruch, in Or Haim, Resh uh, Bet. Resh Bet is 202, Siman Resh Bet. Sa'if Bet, verse 2, the Torah tell us that it's been Paskin La'alacha, the, the Shulchan Aruch Paskin La'alacha, a person that eat unready fruit, a fruit that is unready, for example, unripe uh, pomegranate, unripe uh, grapes, okay, or figs, or dates, whatever. What is the brocha on it? Said the Shulchan Aruch, in that case, the brocha is bore pri adama. We have to say bore pri adama. Come the Maram ben Haviv and say, when you mark that first fruit to take to Bet Amikdash as a Bikurim, what was the status of that fruit? Right. What is the brocha for it? Bore pri adama. In that case, that's why the Torah told you 
אוקיי? ולקחת מראשית כל פרי האדמה. That's the reason, because in a time that you've gone down to your orchard, to your vineyard, to your field, whatever the case is, and you mark the first fruit to grow up on a tree, what was the status of that fruit? was unright. What is the brocha on it? Priya Adama. In that case, that's why the Torah say bore Priya Adama. And now we can understand why is the Torah tell us Mereshit Priya Adama, although that most of the fruit was a fruit that grew on a tree. And then it says something very interesting. Look what it says. Vesamta batene vehalachta el hamakom. On a shot of the Dvarim, the Torah tell us that you put it on a basket and you walk to the place, which is the place we know the place is Bet HaMikdash. Come the Mepharshim. One of the Mepharshim that I'm going to bring today is Rabbi Haim Kohen. Rabbi Haim Kohen, born in a city, in a place that called Aram Tzuba. Aram Tzuba, it's in Syria. Uh, it's Aram Tuba today, it's Halib, the city of Halib, as you all know. He born around 438 years ago, if I'm not mistaken, okay? He wrote a book, Torah Hacham, the Torah of a scholar person, okay? And he asked a question, I don't understand what it said, why does it say that you should walk to the place? Why doesn't it say, okay? that you should come to the place. You should walk. The word walking. You say, why does it say walking? What's so special about the word walking? Say, Rabbi Haim Kohen, something very important. He said like this. He said by that, that the person used to walk to Bet HaMikdash. That's physical work. The Torah come to teach you, say Rabbi Haim Kohen, from that that it say that you walk, is to teach us that the person that walking, it's already a mitzvah to go to the coin, to give it to the coin in Bet HaMikdash. That means when a person walk to Bet HaMikdash, that walking that he have to do, it's already a mitzvah. Hazal in a Gemara in Masechet Sota, listen to that, Rabotai, that will help you to understand. Tell us in page Kavbet uh, Amud Aleph, that means 22 folio 1. Hazal te, that yes, there is a concept that calls schar psiot. What does it mean, schar psiot? Psia is a walking, every step. Hazal tell us there that when a person walk to Shul, get a merit for every step. Every step that you walk to Shul, you get a merit, you get a mitzvah. <laughs> So some people live far away from shore. So what should they do? They have to come with a car. They should park the car as far that they can in a parking lot far away from the shore. Why? Because they have to walk. As many steps that they make, they get mitzvah for every step. That's Gemaran Masechet Sota. Remember that 22 folio 1. I saw another interpretation that even deeper. Is a book that's called Maase Yehiel. Okay, Maase Yehiel is a book that's written by Rabbi Yehiel Michael Heiber, and he actually bringing that uh, that commentary in the name of Rabbi Ariel Leib Lipshit. Rabbi Ariel Leib Lipshit, and he said like this. He said that I saw it said that every step that a person walk to shul. Listen to that, Rabotai. He created an angel. A person done 10 steps, 10 angels he created to walk to Shul. He said, from here you learn something very important. You learn the merit, number one, obviously, that the Torah teaches us, walking to the coin in Bet HaMikdash to bring the Bikurim. How much mitzvot a person make? But you're learning something important that today that we don't have Bet HaMikdash, and we have Mikdash Me'at, but that's Shul. When a person walks to Shul, especially on Shabbos, and he done quite a bit of walking, how much how much merit he received for every step, sorry, that he walked to Shul. Unbelievable. 
קם רבי יחיאל, אין רבי יחיאל סה like this, רבי יחיאל סה, that he actually bringing it again, I have to say, by, by the name of רבי אריה לב ליפשיט. He said that every step that you work to shul, that you walk to shul, you create angels. <laughs> What do we learn from it? About how when we walk to shul, we get number one, schar p'siot, we get merit for every step. Not only that, according to Rabbi Arya Leib Lipschit, we're receiving, we're creating angel in every step. How important is it to walk to shul? Okay, so that's what it said, Ve'halachta el ha-makom. That means that you should walk. And it doesn't say, Ubata, or like we explained earlier, Ve'evi el ha-makom. And he brought it to the place. Why is it said, Ve'halachta, to teach you that there is a mitzvah to walk to Bet HaMikdash? Today that we don't have Bet HaMikdash, and we have Mikdash Me'at, is a mitzvah to walk, to shoot, to park the car. in a parking lot or outside the parking lot, whatever the case is, as far to make as many more steps to get merit from it. And that's what the Torah tried to teach us. That's the secret behind it that Hazal tried to teach us. Let's move on to verse 3. And here there is very interesting pasuk. Again, we're speaking about the Kohen. We're speaking about the Bikurim. I don't know how you say Bikurim in English, There is a special word for Bikurim in English. Mark, there is a special word for Bikurim. I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to think of what it is. Um, there is no special word. I've never... No, I don't okay. know while, you're looking, while you're looking, I'll read in Hebrew and then you read first. Ubata el makom asher yeh bayamim ahem. אוקיי? הוא באת אל הכהן אשר יהיה בימים ההם, ואמרת אליו, הגדתי היום לאדוני אלוהיך כי באתי אל הארץ אשר נשבע אדוני לאבותינו לתת לנו. Okay, and the shot of the Dvarim, the Torah teaches us that when you bring the Bikurim, everyone understands the word Bikurim. It's the first fruit that grown in a vineyard, in an orchard, or in a field that you bring in to Bet HaMikdash, to thank Sakadosh Baruch Hu, to show gratitude. Rashi HaKadosh says something extraordinary. Look what Rashi says. אשר יהיה בימים ההם, אין לך כהן שבימיך כמו שהוא. What is Rashi tell us? Rashi said that you don't have a כהן, okay? Only the כהן that you have in your time. And then, ואמרת אליו, and you should say to him, שאינך כפוי טובה. That you must tell the כהן that you ungrate, that you are grateful, And opposite from ungrateful, you should tell the Kohen that you are very grateful for all what you receive. What is Rashi trying to teach us? On a pshat of the Dvarim, I will explain what's happening. Here we have a mitzvah to walk to Bet HaMikdash, to take the Bikurim to the Kohen, and to show gratitude to the Almighty in Bet HaMikdash for all the abundance that HaKadosh Baruch Hu given us. That's on the pshat of the Dvarim. But what is Rashi tell us? Asher yeh bayamim ha'em, en lecha kohen shebayamich at Moshehu. That you don't have a kohen the same like in your time. And then ba'amarta elav, and you should say to him that you're ungrateful. What is Rashi trying to teach us? It's a very, very difficult what Rashi tried to teach us, and Be'ezrat Hashem, I'm going to try to explain it, because I saw the Zerah Shimshon. The Zerah Shimshon, Rabbi Shimshon Haim Nachmani. Rabbi Shimshon Haim Nachmani, born in the city of Modena. Modena, it's a north of Italy. He born around 318 years ago. And he said like this, 
אין הפשט אוף דה דברים, the Torah come to teach us to show gratitude. To show gratitude to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and to show gratitude to the Kohen. What is the Kohen? He comes to tell you that when you walk into Bet HaMikdash, will be a Kohen, will be there a Kohen. You might gonna think that the Kohen that you have there, that Kohen is not as uh, in a higher level like in a Kohenim that was in a previous generation. He come to tell you on the pshat of the Tvarim that you should look at him like he is the greatest Kohen that there is on the greatest level. Like in the olden days. Nahon that he is maybe meritly, maybe spiritually, he is not on the merit of the Kohenim in the previous generation. But to you, you have to accept him like he is the Kohen. And that's what it said, there will be the Kohen, with Heya Yedia, Hakohen, to tell you that that Kohen now is like any Kohen that was in the previous generation. And Hazal said that something very interesting, that we should treat him with all the respect. Maybe he's not on the same level that the previous Kohenim, but at the moment he's the Kohen, we should give him the full honor. But the question becomes, okay, now we understand ve'amartai la'kohen. Uh, sorry, asher yeh ba'yamim ha'en. But what it means ve'amartai la'kohen? That you should say to the kohen that you are grateful. Why do I need to say to the kohen that I'm grateful? By that that I'm bringing, the bikurim, it already shows that I'm grateful. Why do I need to show, to say, that has ve'shalom, I have to say it physically that I'm grateful. Why? It's not enough that I bring someone a present to show that I'm grateful. That's the question of the Zerashim Shah. And he say here there is something that we have to understand. We have to understand what's happening. He said that the first of all, the Torah tried to teach you to be grateful. Grateful for everything. Not only to the Almighty, also to the Kohen. Why to the Kohen? Hazal tell us and said the Zerah Shimshon that when a person brings the Bikurim, the Kohen help the person that brings the Bikurim, he lifts it up with him. They uplift, okay? The Bikurim together. What was the reason behind it? Hazal teach us. Hazal teach us Kedela la atso ruchot ra'ot. Evil spirit, to stop evil spirit. Vetlalim vekshamim ra'im. That means to stop natural disaster. He say like this. Say the Zer Shimshon that the Kohen help you to lift up the basket with the Bikurim. You know why? It's to stop evil spirit. To stop natural disaster. You say, you know why you have to say that you're ungrateful, say the Zerah Shimshon? Say, I'll tell you. You say, you might going to think that you're working on a field. You ply the ground. You plant. You harvest it. Okay? And then you took it to Bet HaMikdash. You might going to think that all of it is because your hard work merit. Come the Torah and tell you uh, there, Where does it say here? Yeah, Vamarta yeah. Elav, okay? That you should say to him. What do you should say to him? That you're ungrateful. What do you mean you're ungrateful? That you should thank the Kohen Gadol by that that he helped you to uplift the Bikurim that he daven for you. And he daven that should not going to be any evil spirit, should not going to be any natural disaster. Because if there is a frost, the fruit go bad. It's too hot, the fruit get rotten. There is not enough rain, nothing growing. All the crops gone. <clears throat> He said, you have to thank the Kohen Gadol. How do you thank the Kohen Gadol? By saying it. You should say to him, I'm ungrateful to you. 
Why are you ungrateful to him? Because he helped you to lift up that basket that he davened for you. He stopped all of those evil spirits. By that that he davened, he also stopped natural disaster. Nahon that it say Asher Ye Bayami Mahem that will be in those days. Maybe it's not on the same level like the Kohanim before him that was on a higher spiritual level. But still you have to respect him. And you should say that you're grateful for him that your crops and your fruit, whatever you brought, the Bikurim, was good enough. What is the message? There is a message here. Said the Zerah Shimshon. What is the message here? The message here, said the Zerah Shimshon, that we should learn to show gratitude to everyone. Rabotai, first of all, the gratitude to Akadosh Baruch Hu, the one and only. To thank him for everything that we have. Then, to thank number two, whoever we close to. At home is the wife. So thanks for everything. The wife, she should show gratitude for the husband, for all what he do with her. Vice versa. The husband and the wife must show gratitude. About that, but it's come to teach you something very important. That if you learn Torah, maybe to you that's rabbi that you go into his shaur and he teach you something. Maybe it's not on a higher level like other rabbi. You must show him respect because after all, that rabbi already taught you something that you didn't know. How much you obligate to show him respect. And the same for the student. For the teacher, you show gratitude. Also for the children to show gratitude to their parents. The Torah come to teach us here a very important principle. That gratitude is the first thing that HaKadosh Baruch Hu respects from us. We, if we show one each other gratitude, if we treat each other with respect, what we can achieve. But Has Shalom, if we don't show one each other gratitude and we are ungrateful to the Almighty, to the wife, to the rabbi, to the teacher, to the parents, to the husband, then what? I don't want to continue. Each one understand the message. The Torah here come to tell you something very important. It doesn't make a difference who's the Kohen. You have to show gratitude. The Torah doesn't tell us, what does it mean by Yami in those days? Maybe he's not on the same level like in the previous Reba or the previous Kohanim. Show him gratitude. Not only that, you must say to him, thank you. We must learn to show and to say thank you. To show gratitude. To show that we are ungrateful. Every little thing that we get, we must show grateful. How important is it? And that's what the Torah come to teach us, said the Zerah Shimshon. About how important is it, especially in our days, that everyone will respect each other. We need Ahavat Hinam now. And I'm going to get to it soon. No, 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 I'm going to get to it. Because that's the solution for the redemption. Without that, about how we're not going to see redemption. There's many people think that if we're not going to treat each other nicely, respect each other, the Mashiach come. Forget about it. Amal Kadosh Baruch Hu want us united. Let's continue. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip a bit because the time running, because I spent a bit of time. I would like to go to chapter 27 in verse 11. And now I'm going to speak, yes, 27.11. And that's where I want to speak about um, gratitude, love, okay, unity, living together, 
that's what I want to speak. Let's go to verse 11. And in chapter uh, 27, verse 11, Marky, I don't know if you're there. That's it. Moses commanded the people on that day saying, Yeah. Rabotai here, Moshe Rabbeinu hinting to us, Rabotai listen to that. What is the major key to be redeemed? To be redeemed from exile. We want to finish the Galut, the answer in this verse. The Gaon Hidda, Rabbi Haim Yosef David Azulai, he born in Jerusalem 200 and 99 years ago, plus months. He said, if you want to know the answer to stop all the chores, it's in this word. He said, Moshe command the nation on that day. Command what? The Torah doesn't tell us. Say, the Gaon Hida. Take the acronym of the words Moshe, Eight, ha'am, bayom, ha'u. Five words. Take the acronym of each one of those words. What does it say? Moshe. Okay. Eight, ha'am, bayom, ha'u. Moshe. Sorry, I'm just trying to plug my, 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 my phone because it's gone low. So it say Moshe, et ha'am, bayom, ha'u. He said, look at the acronym. Mem, Aleph, Hey, Bet, Hey. What word do you get? Me'ahava. With love. He said like this. Say the Gaon Hida. If you want to be redeemed, there is one answer. To live in peace and unity and love one with each other. What does it mean love? I don't have to accept your decision. I don't have to agree, okay, with your thinking. No, I can continue with what I think. I don't have to, have to agree with you, but I need to respect you with love. Said the Gaon Hida here, Moshe Rabbeinu hinting to the Jewish people, you want to be redeemed? This is the answer. This is the answer. There is no other answer to live with love one with each other. I don't have to agree with you, but I have to respect you. Hazal in a Gemara Masechet Sota Rabotai. Sorry, Masechet Yoma, what am I talking? Sota. Masechet Yoma, Tet Amut Bet, 9 folio 2. Hazal say, what was the cause for the destruction of the second temple? Sinat Hinam. Baseless hatred. He say, what? How can you rectify it? What is the answer for baseless hatred? Baseless love. Avat hina. If we live with one with each other and we love one each other, okay? I don't have to agree with him, with his opinion, but I need to respect him. That's the remedy to be redeemed. That's the remedy that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will redeem us from this exile. Now all of you are going to jump and say, listen, it can never happen. You think that it's not going to happen. It can happen very fast. You remember when Saddam Hussein sent the missile from Iraq to Israel, suddenly all the Jewish people was united. Haman Rasha, he united the Jewish people. Yeshno am ehad mefuzar u mefurad. There is one nation, Haman said to Ahashverosh, that it spread, but it's also split. At Hazal say, I'm actually frightened to say it. Hazal say, that if the Jewish people are not going to unite it together, 
יעמיד להם מלך רשע כענן הרשע. He's going to put on him a wicked king like Haman, that's going to make bad decree, that that's going to force us to be united. So why to wait for that? I'm asking. Not to believe. One with each other with peace and harmony. I don't have to accept the idea. I don't have to accept what he said. But I have to respect him. I don't have to agree. But as long that we live in peace and harmony together. And we judge everyone favorably. Uh, last week, I was in... Uh, When I was davening, after davening, a guy came to me and he showed me Bishar HaMitzvot. Ari HaKadosh writes that you have to love everyone. Love everyone. So he said to me, you know what he means, everyone? I said to love every Jew, it sounds to me. He said, come and show you. He showed me that Rabbi uh, Ari HaKadosh, Rabbi Yitzhak Luria Ashkenazi, he said there, Bishar HaMitzvot, That's mean uh, volume five, I mean chapter five, verse, verse two, if I'm not mistaken, verse two or three. He say you have the obligation to love every person. What it mean every person? I feel goy she basho. I feel goy she basho. Even a gentle. Where is it said that I need to love gentle? Does it say? Say Ari HaKadosh. Shara HaMitzvot. If someone want to see it, I'll send it to you. Unbelievable. Kal v'chomer, how much so? I'm saying, we have to love one each other. Respect one each other. I don't have to agree with him. With his idea, with his opinion. I don't believe it. But if we respect each other and believe in peace and harmony and unity together, how we can stop all of this piguine that we have in Israel, all of those terrorist attacks that we have every week we have, it just doesn't stop. Since the reform starts, look how much hav havoc we have in. Because we split. But if we in unity, That's where our power. And that's what Akadosh brought. And that's what Moshe Rabbeinu hinting to us say, the Gaon Hida, Me'ahava. Moshe et ha'am bayom ahu. Vayitzav Moshe et ha'am bayom ahu. Ve'ekrumen me'ahava. Vutlam. This is our power. That's when we can join together. And that's how we can redeem. Say Moshe Rabbeinu. Here's the hint. I would like to skip off when we'll go to chapter 28, verse 13. And here we see something very interesting that we're going to say in Rosh Hashanah. And I would like to develop it. Look what it says. Hashem shall place you as a head and not as a tail. You shall be only above and you shall not be below. If you hearken to the commandments of Hashem, your God, that I command you today to observe and to perform. Okay, so as you all know, in... Um, in a brachot, in a symbol that we do in uh, Rosh Hashanah, one of the things is, it's a custom to take a head of a sheep and to, to hold it, you don't have to eat with it, because there's a mahloket in the Gemara, in Masechet, I uh, forgot, there's a mahloket in the Gemara, we're going to explain it, Be'ezrat Hashem, this coming Sunday, do I have to eat from the symbol or not? Or just to look To take a head of a sheep, or a head of a fish, or a head of a chicken, it's all different custom, and to say Shaniyel Rosh Velon Lezana, that we should be to a head and not a tail. The Torah here come and tell us, and the Almighty will make you a head and not to a tail. Tada. 
קם רבי עזריה מפיז'ו, רבי עזריה מפיז'ו בורן 444 years ago in the city of Venice in Italy. I said, I don't understand. If you tell me that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will make me to a head, if I'm a head, I'm definitely not a tail. So why do you have to add up the word that you should be to a head and not a tail? If a person is a leader, he's not behind. Why do you, the Torah, put the emphasis in a word? Velo lezanab. That means that you should be a leader, you should be the head, and not to a tail. If I'm a head, I can't be a tail. Ask. That's the question of Rabbi Azariyam Mipijo. Rabbi Azariyam Mipijo brings that question in his book, uh, Bina Laitin. Bina Laitin, that's the name of his book. And he asks this question. What are we learning from that, that the Torah tells us to be a head? Head and not a tail. If I'm a head, I definitely can't be a tail. What is the answer? Said Rabbi Azariah Mepijo, a beautiful answer. Say like this. He said, to be a head, it depends which head. What the Torah tell you that you should be a head and not a tail, that you should be a leader to people that they are head. You should be the leader of the leaders. Okay? There is leader that the leaders to the tell that people lower. What you should ask and what you should try and what you always must look and the Torah tell you that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will give you to be a leader of the first. Those that they had, that they the first. Not to be a leader for, huh, let's call it, those people that miskenim, shemzach. To be a leader of a shemzach, it's not uh, something big. To be a leader of the leaders. That means that the Jewish people should always strive to be and to behave, to be the leaders of the world. And that's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu said that he's going to bless us. And by Ezrat Hashem, that we should be blessed to be the leaders of the head of the head. By Ezrat Hashem. Okay. I would like to end up towards the ends uh, in uh, verse, chapter 28, verse uh, 47. Yeah, 47. With that, I would like to end. And look what it says. Because you do not serve Hashem your God amid gladness and goodness of heart when everything was abundant. The Torah here comes to teach us that that if we not serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu with joys and happiness and be happy when we serving a Kadosh Baruch Hu Lo Alenu, that we're not doing the mitzvot with joys and happiness I don't want to continue what is the Hidush Rabotai there is a deep deep Hidush I saw that it's brought in the introduction to the book Sefer Haredim Sefer Haredim been written by Rabbi Eliezer Askari. Rabbi Eliezer Askari born in Tzfat 492 years ago. He lived in the 16th century, as you see, during the golden era of the Ariya Kadosh, Ramak, Rabbi Moshe Kordoviro, Maharho, Rabbi Chaim Vital, Marana Bet Yosef, Rabbi Yosef Karo. Okay, all the greatest, Al Sheikh Kadosh. In an introduction to his book, Sefer Haridim, he said like this. He said that Ariya Kadosh, Rabbi Tzhak Luria Ashkenazi, he born in Jerusalem 491 years ago. He said that Ariya Kadosh revealed Le'ish Sodo, Ish Sodo, person that close to him. Who it was, he doesn't say, he said Ish Sodo. Okay? 
היא זה שכל מה שהשיג ברוח הקודש, תטמין, עושה רבי אליעזר אסקרי, הרי הקדוש, רבנו יצחק לוריה האשכנזי, revealed to us, that whatever he revealed, to know, to have this, the wisdom, the Holy Spirit, לאין חקר, that means that we cannot understand how deep he understands the Torah, it's only in one merit. He said like this, בזכות השמחה בעשיית המצוות, because when he done the mitzvah, he done it with joys and happiness. רבותיי, if we, here is the key for us to understand. If a person want to understand the Torah, want to love the Torah, want to have wisdom and to remember the Torah, he has the major key. That's the major key. It's a Rabbi Eliezer Asker. When you put the feeling in the morning, run to put the feeling like you can't wait. Like you receive a million rain, like you can't wait to receive that present. You're doing a mitzvah, you will go to Vas for the bread. You go to do any mitzvah, do it with joys and happiness. A Kadosh Baruch Hu will open for you and reveal to you all of those secrets. And that's from Maria Kadosh. And who guaranteed it? Rabbi Eliezer Asker. He said that that's what Ariya Kadosh, Ariya Kadosh revealed to someone that was very close to him. That in the merit that he done the mitzvot in Simcha with love and joy, that's how we reach to all of those spiritual levels. So if we want to reach to higher spiritual level, we have to do it the Simcha. We start with Simcha, we ending up with Simcha, and by Ezrat Hashem, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will show us only Simcha, not only show us Simcha, He will make us, by Ezrat Hashem, be happy and live in unity and peace together, one with each other, and send us Mashiach Titkenu speedily in our day. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Those of you that have questions, please, Bechavot, unmute the microphone and ask. Bechavot, if you have any question regarding the show, So, Rav, if you if you uh, do a simcha, but you uh, do a mitzvah, but without simcha, you're just doing it. Stop. Is it yes, better yes, not yes. to do it or just do it? No, 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 you must do it. No, no, no. I didn't say that. Let me explain. If you want to have those wisdom to understand the depths of the Torah, to understand what's hiding, do it with simcha. There's many people that done mitzvot, not besimcha. It's difficult for them. You know, they stress, they can't take it, they, but they do it. They get the merit for it. And you must do it. But if you want to be in a higher level, to understand the depths of the Torah, okay, to understand a Kadosh Baruch who give you all different kind of wisdom, do every mitzvah besimcha. And then you see it different. Okay, you you understand? Yeah. Beseder? So you're obligated yeah. to do mitzvah, no matter what. Beseder? Yeah. Yeah. Beseder. Okay. As long as we understand that. Yes. Who else want to ask question? Bechavot. Good evening, Rav. May I just come in? Oh. Oh, we waited for you, Doctor. How are you, Doctor? <laughs> Thank you for joining us. I saw when you join us. Okay, you. You're talking about the Cohen. <laughs> this was. Uh, I, I was a couple of minutes late. I'm sorry. Um, no problem. Rather, but every single day, every morning, what do we say? The most important thing. What you've just taught us now. What you just mentioned. We say it every day. And it tells us that no, that it's Hashem who has made us and who we are and what it must be with Simcha. 
because we have just the fact that we're alive and just the fact that we get, get up in the morning and we can dab and then we can talk. That in itself is a, a reason to have simcha. That, that's in itself. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. you know, what uh -huh. you've just told us now is such a depth to it and, uh, and such a height to do it with simcha uh, and joy. But I, I agree with you, but let, let, let's, let's try to develop it. How many people in the morning daven besimcha? <laughs> How many people in the morning? Let's be honest. I need to go. Why it doesn't finish? No, finish the Kaddish. Let me go. No, I need to run. Tell me, who giving you the job? Who giving you the parnasa? That he doesn't think. You understand the difference? Who giving you the appointment to meet whatever you have to meet? If not a Kadosh Baruch. If we live an idea that I have a job, because a Kadosh Baruch Hu given it to me. If I late a few minutes, a Kadosh Baruch Hu want me to late. But I do it besimha, I worship him besimha. If you do it Hashem besimha, what does it mean if you do it Hashem besimha? You should be a slave and be besimha. Although that you worship him, worship him besimha. Even if you have to run to work, don't stand on the edge by the by the door of the shoe. I need to leave. No, be in happiness. That number one, that you have a job. Why are you running to job? He giving you the job. Yeah. Big thing. Number two, who giving you the appointment? We organize the appointment, whatever he is. So why are you worried? That you have to do ishtadlut. I'm not saying not. You have to do your own personal effort. You must do your own personal effort. But worship him with simha. While you ensure, do it with simha. And then not only that you're going to be successful, I mean physically, I mean spiritually what you can get. These people hear the sound of the shofar, boop, they're up. Rega, rega, all year round, Abibi, my friend, 11 months, a year ago. All I can do who want you to listen to the shofar. And then say thank you to Akadosh Bahu. David, Hashem, Uri, Vishai, say word by word. You know, I read, I think I can read Hebrew, I think. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I think, Just about. <laughs> but you know, there is people that hardly can read Hebrew. I didn't finish a half of that mismo. They finish. I'm saying to myself, how can it be? Let me try to say it fast, you know? I'm trying to say it fast. I can't get to that speed. Uh, uh, they may, I don't know. Maybe they know it all bad. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Once a year, you have a chance, and we explain these 13 principles there. It's 13, 13 attributes of mercy. Be besimha that he given you a chance to do atonement, to rectify. Hmm. I don't understand. I, that's for me very difficult. And I start with simha, I end up with simha. We should always look everything that we have besimha. And if we be simha with what we have, then we show gratitude to Akadosh Baruch Because when a person is happy, he show gratitude. And he said, thank you to the Almighty. They said, I think so. That's what's the idea behind it, uh, Jeffrey. Thanks. Uh, one. Another point, Rav, if I may. Okay. The first thing that you mentioned is the first and most important thing is gratitude. Is gratitude. And perhaps yeah. that is the key 
of how to get the country together, to have rallies where there are soldiers saying thank you to those who have prayed and done for them, and for the religious and for the observant to say thank you, thank you for doing what you are doing. There should be something, a communal thing of gratitude to each other openly, that people can oh. see this. This is how we can get people together to unite. Everyone to be appreciated because people think well they govern and then we gotta go and fight now there was a, and the other ones say uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, oh yes they're fighting but it's because of us that uh, our prayers that they're success no it's both it's both everybody has a role to play and maybe this is the key maybe we got to have rallies we're gonna we got to announce it we're gonna have Podcasts. We're going to have things where people of from the two different spectrums of the society are together saying thank you for what you do. I don't agree with you. I don't like what you do. I don't. I don't like this change of judicial reform. I don't like you uh, uh, going into Somalia. I don't. I don't like it. Okay, that's your, your. I respect your opinion. It's okay. I don't agree with you. But I still love you all the same. And that's the whole thing, the gratitude. But we've got to do it openly to say thank you, even if we disagree totally. I mean, look, at you taught us about Ahab when he went to war. He did everything wrong. Everything you could possibly do wrong, you can throw the book at him. But he was successful in everything, in every army, in every battle he did. Why? You told us. Because just this. It's, they, there was there was uh, there was uh, uh, um, Ahavat among the people. Uh, the fact they were doing that, they were misguided. They still loved each other. Yeah. And this is it. We've got to do it. We've got. This is a rallying cry. This what you said tonight is a rallying, a rallying cry for us to, to open well, up. I wish, Say, I wish, thank I you. wish that the people in the Jewish government in Israel. The people here will do rallies of unity. How important is it, the rally of unity? I would call it the rally of unity. Yes, yes. It starts you know, with us. The same like Stop. I don't, there's certain food that I like. You might not going to like. I don't know. There's certain food that you eat, I don't eat. But it doesn't make you any different for me. It doesn't make you any better. It doesn't make you any worse. It's just that I don't like that food. The same like there's certain cold drink that you like. I can't drink that cold drink. There's certain whiskey that you like. I don't like. There's certain beer that you like. I don't like. And there's certain thing that I like. You might not going to like. But it doesn't make us any different. Maybe we don't like. I don't have the same opinion. But we can still respect each other. Absolutely. We can still have a range of unity. Yeah. That's the that's the idea. That's the Hidush. Yeah. Yeah. That's what to say. Okay. Okay, Ashra. Yeah. <laughs> the great lovely show. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question about that? No. No more question. I would like to thank all of you. To wish you all a beautiful weekend ahead. I hope that you have a new idea about Parashat Kitisa when you're going to read it, give you a different interpretation how to look at Parashat Kitisa. Just to remind everyone again that the Shaul on Shabbos is at Yeshiva College, live an hour before Minha, it's around 4.30 in the afternoon. 4.30 in the afternoon in a big shul in Yeshiva College. Those of you that can join, I would love to see you all. In the meantime, I would like to take the opportunity and wish all of you great Shabbos, Shabbat Shalom to all of you, a beautiful weekend, a relaxed weekend. But it's not a shame that we should see only merit. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a great evening and a great Shabbos. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you.